Hello booktube. I'm here to make another video. I'm joining in to a read-along and following along with Steve Donahue and Matthew at the Mayberry Book Club for Evelyn Waugh's Brideshead Revisited, uh, which was published in 1945. Um, and um, they've, they've made videos for the first quarter of of the book I will see if I can link those videos down below for my video I'm not going so much into um, the story they have um, described it uh, uh, but or you might be reading along with it as well so um, what struck me from both these videos especially Matthews was sort of a, a perfect example of how people not just see things differently, they read things differently, they see different things, they interpret different things, how they approach things is so different. Uh, Matthew was talking about how he was confused uh, in, in some ways. He, he didn't quite understand, he, he had struggled with the beginning of the book, especially with uh, uh, like the location of where they were. Uh, it's not specified at right at the beginning or the context so much other than that he's in the army and they're doing sort of training maneuvers and moving to a different location. And then there's, there's things that happen during that time. Now, it seems like that seems to be a common thing because I, I glanced through a lot of comments that people were saying the same type of things. And I just sort of scratched my head and going, why is that a problem? Because as Steve Donahue said, the beginning of the book is in Charles Ryder's head. Charles Ryder is not going to tell himself where he is. He knows where he is. He knows the connections between everybody. So there's going to be things that are going to be purposely left out, like I think purposely left out, because if it's too much detail, it doesn't make it real. It's no longer in his head. Uh, we're no longer in his head. And that's that's the key. We're in his head. So we have to go, for the, go along for the ride uh, in his head. And I read this first when I was a teenager in the early 80s. I never... These things never even came up to me asking where this was because I figured, okay, well, we'll learn that. Or if we don't, then it's not really important. Uh, and there's a bit vague at, at sort of relationships a little bit. That's fine. Um, and, you know, he pops out like when he's at university, he, he mentions several names of, you know, uh, that turn out to be art historians. Some of them I never heard of at the time. But that's where, okay, well, who is Roger Fry? Who is, you know, uh, Ruskin? Who is, uh, you know, and then one thing that I really like is that he's, uh, when, when, when they're at Brideshead, um, he, he, he talks about the library and he says it's a Sloan-esque library. And I was like, I was curious, well, what's that? And so, like, you know, I didn't know at the time, uh, but I knew it's obviously something special. Uh, and it doesn't add to the story, it just adds background meat uh, to, to sort of flesh everything out a little more. And it's Sir Hans Sloan that they're talking about, 17th century, I think it is, uh, had a massive library in London, of uh, maybe 50,000, 70,000 books. Uh, it was donated to the British Library, which became the foundation for, I'm sorry, the British Museum, which became the foundation for the collection, I think, of the British Library. And in his library, um, like each bookcase sort of had a, I think they were all classical uh, busts of classical writers over top of each one. And the way it's uh, described, you know, the book is from, you know, this one with, uh, you know, Cicero uh, bookcase and whatever. Uh, and that's how sort of the books were sort of described at their locations. But anyway, these are the types of things that, that you, sort of, you, you sort of know. And like Steve Donahue said, well, a lot of people reading today in the 20th century, born in the 20th century, don't know the, the uh, he, he mentioned specifically the structure of the, uh, of the British Army. Well, no, <laughs> uh, they won't. Uh, but that's where you can learn it. You, you, all you know is that there is a structure there. 
And you don't need to know to understand the story to go along with it, because as I say, this is in Charles Ryder's head. This is something that if it's not explained, if you're interested in it, you can look. But you do know that there is somebody who's in charge uh, and he's getting orders and then he gives orders to someone else. He has a servant uh, and... And uh, what their university, there is a scout. Well, what's the scout doing? He's cleaning up the puke that uh, Sebastian Flight, uh, you know, puked uh, inside uh, the window. And he sort of, you know, goes to wake him up at times. And he tells him about, you know, the flowers. So he lets somebody in to put the flowers in, like Sebastian or whoever delivered the flowers. But I think it was Sebastian. Um, so you, you, you can infer from that what the scout is. If you want to learn more, you 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 go into de- you know you 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 research it like I did. Uh, I at the time like later I researched it. It's like I, I learned a lot of stuff, and it's like it, it's like it is a different world. But again, it's the world within Charles Ryder's head. So you have to go along for the ride. And if the writer gives too much information, it ruins the story. There's enough there to, to go and then to learn as you learn, as you read the book. Uh, there are certain cultural things that are going to be a given that are Britishisms uh, or Englishisms, if you want to call it, um, that might be a little uh, difficult for people that are not English to, to sort of understand. So that, that I can sort of understand. But again, it's even at the time that it was written, there's a lot of Catholicism in here, and there's talk about Catholicism. People that are reading this book, a lot of them won't be Catholics. They won't really know what the Catholicism and and the strictures are for and the structure of being a Catholic. So they would have been lost there too, and it's not because they were they're of the time, and they would have been lost. And also, too, like all these other things, like Sloan, Sloan-esque library, uh, 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 Roger Fry, and, and the other uh, Ruskin and stuff like this. Now, if you went to a public school, all those things are known, like Evelyn Waugh would have. Evelyn Waugh. He would have known all this stuff, and everybody else would have known. They would have made those connections. But your average person who went to school chances are they wouldn't know these things so it's not because somebody is born today even then they would have had difficulty with it even today i pick up a book and there's references to things i don't have a clue if they reference some tv shows or if they make sports references i don't have a clue i'm living in this time but i don't have a clue but then they make another another reference i know but somebody else doesn't know doesn't doesn't get the reference Getting the references does help. It, it puts more meat, I think, on a story. But it's not always necessary um, to, to, to get those all the time. It, 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 it's, it gives deeper understanding and deeper fulfillment, yes, of the story. But that's where, um, but that's where, like this book was written. It was not written for your guy who sort of was was uh, you know picking up the trash and went and barely went to school and probably quit at at maybe at, at sixteen at, at the latest. Um, they wouldn't have under they would have read this. It would have been a foreign world to them. It would have been a totally foreign world to them. Um, and they're living at the time. Uh, this this is written for people who are in the world of the author Evelyn Waugh uh, and almost you know uh, Sebastian Falk uh, and Charles Ryder. They're they're the ones that it's sort of written for. It's written for an educated uh, uh, people that would that would really get those references because otherwise he wouldn't have probably put those references in. And a lot of times, um, there's also a snobbish aspect that I, I think, anyway, of a lot of things. Well, let's put in these these references to things, and but but because I know only people who who went to my kind of school, the public school, will know, you know. And there's the whole thing about the wine and stuff like that. Um, like they just, you know, they 
they, they go into quite a bit about the, the wine and them, uh, you know, um, tasting the wine in, in the, in the cellars. And nobody, even today, like you have to be filthy rich to, to like, I mean, filthy rich to, to have the kind of cellar of wine and, and the width and breadth of the wine that they have and to do the tasting. A lot of people drink wine today, but not, not on the level of, of, of that. So they wouldn't really know. Most people don't know about the tasting and stuff. like. Well, they know that it's done maybe, but, but they, it's not something that is in their, in their everyday life of drinking wine. Uh, most of them are sort of like Rumpole who just, you know, uh, Thames and Blank, and Bank, but Plonk basically, you know, it's just the cheapest, uh, bilge water wine, you know, uh, but they drink it. Uh, and that's something that I, I just, uh, because I'm allergic to wine. So there, there's something in the process of making it that, you know, I, I have a few sips of it and I can start, you know, puking, um, everything, headaches, uh, eyesight goes all, all crazy, even when it's in food, because people say, oh, well, it's the alcohol that's gone. Well, it's not the alcohol that causes it. It's something in the process of making it. And it's that part is still left over when it's in the food. So I have to be careful. Um, but anyway, uh, it's, so yeah, so it, it just goes back to how people, uh, I, I don't know, is it like our, our like the one thing like, uh, uh, Steve said about 20th century readers, they, they, they don't know this and they need this kind of stuff. I don't know if they really need it, um, to really enjoy the story. It, it would be helpful, I suppose, uh, to have the sort of footnotes, even for people uh, at the time, it would have been helpful. And even even uh, other people would be helpful because I'm, I'm sure there's things that I've even missed here and I'm sure there's stuff that he's missed. Uh, you know, anybody who reads something doesn't see sometimes every single little thing that the author has put in. Um, so sometimes it's it, it is good to have that. But uh, uh, I just I just don't know if it's um, it, it, like, it, is it is it? And this is a question. I don't have an answer for this. Uh, is the, the problem with, oh, that they want, it, it's like people want firm answers to everything. They just don't want to go along with the story anymore. And they don't want to wait to find out these answers. And, uh, but as I say, it's, uh, it's, it, we're in Charles's head. So therefore, um, Charles is not going, and if he does make all these uh, you know, reference is perfectly clear and, and it does exposition beyond to, to make it clear. Um, to me, that would not be real. It's like, that's not, it would it'd be false. It just wouldn't work this way. You go along for the story, you go along and you know, you question, you ask things, Oh, what, what, what is this? And then you, you wait, you be patient. And then you, you either find that out or if you don't, you realize, well, that is not really important for the story, and it wasn't important for, for Charles Ryder. Now, sometimes that can be because the writer is not very good, but in this case, I don't think that's the case with uh, uh, Evelyn Waugh. He is a good writer, and as I say, this is a, a fantastic book, and it's so well written. It's, it's like Steve says, lyrical. Um, and Steve was saying that uh, he, he was wondering if... Uh, the the first meeting um that charles had with with julia that it it showed anything of of how important she would be i don't know if it, it's not so much important but you you can tell that there's something there between them or at least he sees in her because he 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 says that she's more sort of what's the term a more womanly than any woman he's ever known so clearly he's seeing her in a different light than normal and he says that he sort of recognized her because she looks a bit like sebastian and also and then he does say when she he takes uh, uh, a smoke there is that bat squeal of sexuality so so that sort of adds to that aspect but also with the homoerotic aspect that it was clearly that you know anthony blanche there's no question at this point we don't quite know, uh, obviously. Uh, there is sort of a little bit of hinting between um, Sebastian and and um, and Charles. 
but you see it's to me it works out later it's a bit of a spoiler so you want to you may want to stop the thing now but to me it's sort of like he's attracted to julia because he is attracted to sebastian but i don't believe he ever they they never engage in that he's attracted to him he's sort of in denial i suppose um or he he would never accept the fact of that so therefore she's a substitute for him but anyway that's that's something else and as later but i think that's all, that's why that's all there because and then later um uh you know they're talking together and he says oh she's she looks like me or something like that and and, and he's going and charles says oh does she and stuff like this he already knows See, that's, that's sort of the play that he's playing with himself in his mind that he, like, you know, it's still in his mind, but he's playing. He's playing with himself, and he, it, it's a denial thing, I think. Uh, but anyway, no, it's, it's like, it's interesting, and I'm looking forward to see what what um, Steve and Matthew have to say as the, as the book continues. Oh, the other thing is that uh, Matthew liked the interaction between uh, Charles and his father, Steve thought it was his father was sort of like, you know, cold and manipulating. I think, I'm not sure if he was saying manipulating, but cold. And but to me, I just think it's great because it's, I love the character of his father. He's just batty. He's doolally. He's, he's, he's lost it. He's, he's living in his own world. Like uh, Charles's cousin says, you know, your father is living in his own world since since um, Charles's mother died in, um, looks like, I think it was uh, Serbia, in the winter, like of exhaustion, died, he's just crawled in, uh, inside himself. He, he does not any longer get any connection to anyone else. Um, and he doesn't get the, the uh, you know, little hints, or the big hints, that Charles is saying, I have no money. How am I going to get money? He doesn't connect those things. It's not malicious. And he just doesn't, he doesn't connect those things. And he doesn't understand why he doesn't have any money because he's got money. And his part, within his mind, I suspect he would say, well, why is he, you know, I've got money. So therefore he's got money. Um, and he would give it to him. But, you know, is he's not asked. So he doesn't even think of the fact that I need to offer this. Um, because like even the, the other thing is like, he's just, you know, he's just plain matter of fact. It's like, well, what can you do for Sebastian? You're not a doctor. You're not, you know, you're nothing. You can't do anything. So why bother? Like, you know, it's like, you know, he, he doesn't see the, the need to give sort of moral comfort. Um, and the other thing is when he comes back, um, well, I don't know if see, that's the thing. It's the reading of this. Uh, the, the volumes are a little different, but he comes back and his, and his father braids him and says, well, you didn't tell me. I was, I was worried about your friend. You know, did he die? You know, because I think that's just, an, uh, I think like he, 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 he thought of that and it's just, you know, um, he thought that way. And I just love the character and it's like, Sir, uh, Sir John Gilgood um, played uh, played the the father in in the uh, uh, eighty one uh, miniseries, so uh, and it's just fabulous. And I think the reason why it's so good is it's, it's like two of my some of my uh, two of my favorite writers, I guess. I wouldn't say one and two or or, or you know they're, they're definitely in the top ten or top fifteen writers is Evelyn Waugh. And John Mortimer. John Mortimer wrote the screenplay. He adapted it for for the series, and he created Rumpole. So hence bringing in Rumpole there uh, earlier. But anyway, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to um, to 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 the rest of this because this is the third read. But as I say, I, I like I'm trying to go back to when I first read this, and uh, that my my. Um, impressions at the time and it's like i just never had any of those impressions some of the things i sort of knew um because i had read other things that were sort of unclear to me um it, it's sort of like when i when i first read uh, cp snow and they talked about pounds pennies and uh, shillings florins you know um guineas and stuff like this and 
obviously I knew it's money, but I didn't know how it broke down, like what a shilling was, how many pence were in a pound, what was a guinea, and sort of things like that. So I got a book out, a library, I think, and I learned it. You know, and then it was like, oh, okay, so now, you know, I know. And weights and measures and stuff like that. There's things that you, there's obvious, there are always going to be things that you, when you read, you don't know. And I think that's where you have to, if, if you are interested, then you go and learn those things. And it will make the reading experience, I believe, deeper, more meaningful. Uh, but it's not 100% necessary. All you need to know is money. But when you do know these things, it gives you a little more understanding of the culture, the characters at times. And sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it does. Uh, but it gives you more understanding of the culture. And sometimes they're like, well, that's why it's so batshit insane, you know? And it's like, because of X, Y, and Z. That's why they are that way. You know, uh, or, you know that's, that's how you could, you could look at it that way. Or just, oh, that explains it. You know, that explains why X was so interested in this and why, you know, isn't or whatever and how that affected their relationship. Ah, oh, that makes more sense. That makes a deeper sense. You know, that, that type of thing. But anyway, I am looking forward to more of this and I will end it there and uh, I will be back. Uh, BookTube, thank you.